Coombe Transmissions didn't use any Nazi imagery or... That was basically, it became very much to do with sexual taboos. Coombe Transmissions began as street theatre and was very much more like theatre of the absurd. A bit, a bit like Monty Python, but a bit more serious. And was very much more about... It was a commune that dealt with trying to break down human behaviour and the psychotherapeutic destruction of, of conditioned responses, basically saying that society deliberately controls all of us by um, pressuring us, by bullying us into behaving the way that peer groups, um, politicians and families would rather we behaved instead of behaving how we feel instinctively we want to behave. I've always felt that it was much better to do things that you believed in. So, so Kuhn began by trying to find ways to break down preconceived ideas of behavior and eventually, of course, ended up with sort of sexuality. Why are we afraid to be naked in public? Why are we inhibited to have sex in public? Why are we meant to dress this way if we're male and this way if we're female? Are these things necessary or are they just um, means to control us, means to make us afraid of being different? If we're afraid of being different, are there ways to change so that we're not afraid? So that was very much what Kuhn was about. After a while, in the 70s, we began to use music as an environment while we were doing performance pieces in galleries and arts festivals. And we noticed that the effect of the performance work, as we got more intimate and more um, gratuitous with the sexual content, uh, that, that the music somehow added to the impact with the audience. So we became interested in the effect of music, and that's when Throbbing Gristle really began. And Throbbing Gristle, really the only reference to Nazis is Cyclone B Zombie, which was the B-side of United. United was a love song, and Cyclone B Zombie was based on a true story I read uh, by a woman called Gita Sereni, who wrote a book, Into That Darkness, about the Nazi concentration camps, where she talked about the, the, uh, the Jewish women who, rather than be executed, became basically prostitutes to the Nazi officers. So it was, it was a story about that, the, the moment in your life where you're confronted with whether to stay alive and compromise what you believe in or die and not compromise it. But of course, it's much easier for the lazy media to, to say that you're colluding or agreeing with Nazism because you actually discuss it. But of course, as we all know, Newspapers every single day talk about the Iraq war and terrorism. It doesn't necessarily mean they're agreeing with it. It means they're reporting it. So the thing I think was most important with Throbbing Gristle was that it began to make journalism a valid lyrical aspect. It was basically saying nothing is going to escape our investigation. We will write a song about anything that we're fascinated by or appalled by. And so that was really the reason that it tended to cause some, some uh, confrontation with the status quo was because it, it dealt with hypocrisy, hypocrisy and bigotry and that's, that's what's really hidden behind all the mass media. Another, another thing that we got accused of was with the, the logo of Industrial Records, which was the label that we had. Um, we used an image, a, a very contrasty black and white image of what people assumed was just a factory with a chimney. And for the first couple of years we were doing industrial records, there was no controversy at all until one day I happened to say deliberately, actually that's the ovens at Auschwitz. And then all of a sudden people were upset and disgusted and the same people who hadn't been bothered before were suddenly very disturbed. And that was the bit that I was interested in was when you give just one more piece of information, what changes? The building didn't change. The image of the building didn't change, but their reaction changed based on a piece of information. And that moment, that borderline of the way that people judge things or react to things based on what they're told is, is, is a, a one of the ways that we're controlled by the media. It's one of the systems that, that's used to manipulate the way we, rea we react. So it's a very important thing to, to observe and check. Um, why rock and roll bands aren't allowed or aren't supposed to investigate 
things as important as that is beyond me. But that was the original consensus. Of course, now Throbbing Gristle is sort of vindicated in a way, I think. And they're the same people who hated us then and now saying, let's put you in the Tate Gallery. So that doesn't mean we trust them. It just means they're trying to manipulate us all again. So you have to be very careful because they're in a way doing the same thing, which is giving a new piece of information about throbbing gristle that's meant to say it's not dangerous anymore or you don't need to think about it anymore. So it's still uh, another tactic, another strategy by the establishment media to disenfranchise our right to comment on the world outside. You follow me? I hope so. We'll get there, don't worry. <laughs>